always it caps out at 50 and there's always at least 50 people that put on their headsets to watch comedy no shit and then we have a bouncer so if anybody does talk caps out at 50. or uh they the the guy kevin just comes over and he'll give him one like shh and then if they keep talking he just fucking kicks him out of the room <laughs> and then there's just another body that just replaces him oh what the fuck oh no ray's gone well it's just us now it's the tom and tom podcast <laughs> we're gonna call it the crack break <laughs> <laughs> oh but no, i think i'm gonna end up getting one of those oculus here in another couple weeks yeah man. try it out see what let me see know what it's about when you get All your of- oculus um I like everybody at least do the open mic on a Monday night first. Yeah. That way you get your get your VR legs under you. And then you can do the I'll put you on a oh man, that's great. That's good. <laughs> but then I'll throw you on a showcase show. And then you're just then I add you to a Facebook group and at least once a week I'm like, who wants time this week? Fuck yeah. Let's try this again. <laughs> nice nice it's good this is quality uh, content yeah he just quality. got done telling me how he wasn't an amateur anymore he's like now we use <laughs> we use zoom we share screens i'm like okay <clears throat> poor ray he's trying have you ever seen sean savoy perform yeah he was up at the uh the club up here in hanover a couple weeks ago you know how he has that opening bit where he doesn't say anything he's just on stage and he'll dance and they're like dj kill that shit right uh he did it in vr on the fucking on saturday or yesterday he did it on vr he gets up on stage and he's like and his avatars dance around he's not myself in the room (laughs) he's not saying shit right and so then people start going unmute yourself Turn your mic on. <laughs> hey, unmute yourself. And then Kyle, who it's Kyle's club. Kyle was like, dude, unmute your mic. And Sean, did, Sean just kept dancing. And Kyle just fucking booted him out of the club. It's like, get the fuck out then. <laughs> Ooh, shit. And Ooh. then he had to rush. Then he came back in. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then he fucking did his set and he fucking crushed. And I was like, yeah, I just saw Sean Savoy crush. I haven't <laughs> seen that in a while. That's good for Sean. <laughs> And of course, you know, uh, we're uh, we're live on Facebook Live. Somehow, my dumbass kept on booting myself out of the own uh, out of the room numerous times. But uh, of course, I'm here with Tommy Simbazo and Tom Nutty. This is our first fully fermented live, our vintage content. I'm going to be showing that at the end of this exclusively right here on Facebook Live. And um, guys, like you know, we're, we're just talking. Of course, Tommy Simbazo just got back from Vegas. Um, have either of you guys? ever had the chance to visit eastern state penitentiary in philadelphia no but i've heard good things about it is it haunted oh it's extremely haunted it's like one of the oldest prisons in america al capone actually stayed at eastern state penitentiary before he went to alcatraz so he actually had a room there and you'll see in the footage later on that he had one of the nicer rooms there and it's crazy, like looking some of the stuff up, you know, it Eastern State in 1821, it was built to hold 250 inmates. And the British art architect who designed it, he received a hundred dollar prize for his design. So he designed that prison. And, and way back in those days, 18- oh yeah, hundred bucks. Oh yeah. He like, was like hookers and blow. <laughs> yeah. And that's the kind of thing. It's like, just imagine that. Like today, you uh. give somebody, you know state-of-the-art designs for like a fucking you know building and they're like oh here's a hundred dollars thank you you'd be like well fuck i can't even buy like three groceries with this fucking money like what the fuck <laughs> kind of shit is this and yeah it, it's insane and, and one thing that's uh like eastern state like when we were there it, it's actually kind of funny like you hear me kind of in the background you don't hear me ask the guy directly it was the, the guy's name was fran who was our tour guide and you hear me ask at some point if Al Capone had to shower with just, you know, the regular people, all the people below him pretty much Mm -hmm. like, you know, you have this hardcore gangster in there and and it's just like, yeah, you know, so it's like, did he shower privately? Like, you know what, you know, that that's the whole thing. It's like, 
I hope the whole time you just kept asking him questions about Al Capone in a shower. Yeah. Um, what kind of body tone did he have? What did he like work out, or was he like a little paunchy? <laughs> did How he big was his hog? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can you tell me exactly when this ruler? Where yeah. was Al? <laughs> you stop me! You stop me! Stop me! Stop, Jesus! Stop me! <laughs> Well, it's, it's funny too because they also had a dog as an inmate. There's a dog that they had there. Yeah, and you, you see it in the footage. There's a dog that got convicted for murdering a cat in Philadelphia. So he became a dog inmate. And like, it, just imagine, like, it, like me if I'm if I'm a prisoner, if I'm an inmate, like yeah. I would love to have a dog. Like, fuck yeah. that that dog. If that was your celly, or what if you're his yeah. bitch? That dog made you his bitch. You got to hold its pocket while you're always walking down. The yeah, path. you're you're in there for some old timey crime, like you know, stealing a fucking loaf of bread, and you're in there with a convicted murderer. Yeah, yeah. Your pet. and it's a dog. <laughs> it's a dog. The, the dog, dog is, makes you. You have to suck that dog's dick every night. <laughs> the, the dog's the hardest in. motherfucker in the prison. Yeah, yeah. You get you get shake. You get a shakedown from the dog. When you get in, and the dog just like, look, you sit next to him. He slides your cornbread over. It just goes (laughs) and eats your fucking food. It's It's got little knuckle tattoos that says (laughs) rough life. (laughs) And of course, uh, Eastern State Penitentiary, they've been closed, I believe, since 1977. So you can go up there and get an actual tour of the prison itself, which is phenomenal. If you ever have a chance to do it, Go do it. They have a haunted attraction also. I've been to the haunted attraction. Me, I, I'm a big horror guy, so I was pretty, you know, up and down on the, the haunted attraction. But what is it? Is it like a Kim's Crip like sort of thing? Yeah, or yeah, it was kind of jump kinda out at that. you. Yeah, okay. yeah. And you know, I, I mean I didn't really particularly care for it, but the tour of the prison itself is amazing, especially seeing Al Capone's cell, seeing all the stuff that went on with it. And I, I mean, there's just so many notable people that went there and then also apparently in in 1945 there was a major escape carried out by 12 inmates including the infamous willie sutton who was another gangster over the course of a year they dug an undiscovered 97 foot tunnel under a prison wall and during renovations in the 1930s an additional 30 incomplete inmate dug tunnels were discovered so 30 imagine that that many people were trying to escape this fucking place now like, it was that one was dog. dog yeah the <laughs> dog was just like <laughs> yeah they're, they're sitting there, i think the dog's name was pep they just sit there they're like dig pep dig dig like the dog just digs until he doesn't have claws anymore like, <laughs> There's a what thing if, here that says that when the prison closed in 1971, a colony of cats lived inside. When <laughs> restoration began, the cats were captured and neutered, thus causing them to eventually die off. Uh, and then an artist sculpted 39 cat sculptures which surround the property. And uh, so then, the sculpture were purposely made of material that slowly dissolves over time to represent the inevitable natural decay that faces all living things. So <laughs> they, they did avenge Pep in the in the long run. The cats yeah, did yeah. win. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's funny because Eastern State was one of those, you know, prisons. It was built, you know, way back in the day, you know, a penitentiary. You It would make you penitent. Like, you would go there and you would not, like... You know, it wasn't like applicable living conditions like now. Like, you know, you go now, you can have a fucking PlayStation, you can watch TV, you can do whatever you want. Way back in the day, you go to prison, you know, you're in solitary confinement. Like, it's pretty much just you and bars and just like a toilet. And that's it. You know, you see the outside world maybe like once a week or some shit. Mm. And, you know, they they weren't making any TikTok burritos on back in the day. Hey, Sally. Yeah. (laughs) I want a grape wrap. I saw one where the dude had like literally like 40 rolls of toilet paper that he was using as a burner. He was just switching yeah. them out and yeah, he, he was like using the, the like the his tabletop. bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like the fucking worst hibachi I've ever seen. <laughs> well, it, it, it's funny because when, when you look at the prison itself, like you see like all the buildings, like they kind of tunnel out. It kind of has like a spider design of all the different ways you know, the building goes, all the different wards and all that. And then it has like the big block fence around it, the big brick fence, which makes it kind of look like a castle. 
And when you drive by it in Philly, like I, before I even knew what Eastern state was, I wrestled in Philly all the time. And I would drive by and I'd be like, what the fuck is that castle? Little did I know that it was one of the most infamous prisons in the United States, you know, and, and that's just the whole thing. And of course, you know, ghost hunters has been there, you know, countless people have been there, you know, they, they pick up all kinds of, you know, paranormal stuff at Eastern state, but I just, I can't imagine what it would be like to go to a prison like that. Like, just imagine you're there and they walk you in and you, you know, you, you get picked up for pickpocketing Mm -hmm. and then they take you in there and you're like a couple of cells down from Al Capone. Like, just imagine that. Or Pep Pep the dog. It could (laughs) go either way. (laughs) (laughs) Who would you rather deal with? Pep the dog or Al Capone? Like, I mean, I don't know. Al Capone wouldn't make you lick itself. (laughs) (laughs) Al Al Capone never killed a cat. You yeah, <laughs> Pep's just sitting there with a thing of fucking uh, peanut butter, just like, all right, we all know what's gonna happen. I'm hungry. He, he's the he's Lather the fucking up. he's the pod he's the pod boss or whatever they call it on sixty days in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny because I don't know if you guys ever watched it, but I was a huge fan of the show Oz. If you've ever seen Oz on HBO, yeah. and that was such a great show, and that's what got me familiar with J.K. Simmons who of course is J Jonah Jameson in Spider-Man. And of course he's in, you know, the farmer's commercials and all that, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and, and what was it? He was a, was he a Nazi or what was yeah, he? Aryan or something like that. White yeah, supremacist. White supremacist. In uh, Oz. And I remember there was a scene in Oz where like the one dude had to get like a gum transplant and they found out that like his gums, like the transplant that he got were from like a Jamaican man and like they just like beat the dog shit out of him in like the mess hall because he now had to make it. That, that's why they picked him for those commercials because he knows a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's like, get me pictures of Spider Man or else. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get me pictures of Jamaican Spider Man. <laughs> Jamaican Spider Man. That was and the only was- Spider Man not in the new one. Yeah, <laughs> and of course, what's funny too is they, they also they had women in Eastern State also. So oh, you know, I'm trying to find now if they had their own. Like I, I don't know. I bet they were real dolls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there was one earlier. I saw uh, what it was on the site. It says something about notable inmates which had Al Capone on it. But I mean, just uh, okay. So here's some of, some of the the actual buildings that were inside of it they had they actually have the price of how much it was like the rotunda and links roofing was 355,000 like 355,000 back then is probably like you know a quarter of a million dollars today and then you know they, <laughs> they had death, death <laughs> row was the last cell block built which in 2011 collections began in preparation to restore the roof and the drainage system called of cell block 15 there was actually no one put the death at the penitentiary. Oh shit! I didn't know that there was no one actually put the death there. So I guess you know, not 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 officially. You know? Yeah, yeah, not officially. <laughs> I'm sure somebody fell yeah. down the steps. You know. Oh Whoopsie. yeah, I'm, I'm sure Al Capone made some people quote unquote disappear while he was there. So <laughs> yeah. I see. I'm trying. I'm looking up pictures of inmates, and there's a woman. There's uh, Frida Frost. That's who it was. That's who I was thinking of. That's a hard-looking woman. <laughs> the handsome lady. Yeah. You can find her website on Homely Fans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they have an art exhibit called Ghost Cats. And I said, when the prison closed in 19... 19- oh, there you go. The colony of cats. Right <laughs> you don't pay any attention to anything I said. <laughs> tell it again ray <laughs> <laughs> oh shit like i did when we went to visit they have a, a gargoyle there and the gargoyle photo is actually pretty awesome like out it overlooks the prison so here i'll save it this is what the gargoyle actually overlooking the prison looks like so let me just pull it up on here and, and i'll show it up so everybody can see it do, 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 do. if uh, I ever find what it is right here. So there's that. Look yeah, that. there's uh, Al Capone, uh, Victor Babe Androli, Morris the Rabbi. <laughs> Morris the Rabbi. <laughs> yeah, why was he called the Rabbi? 
Yeah, those were some of the gargoyles that were outside nice. the prison itself. So just imagine that. Like, you know, you're going and you just see one of those gargoyles just kind of, you know, staring you down in your face and all that. And what was it? It was Frida, uh, what, what was her name? Frida, Frida Frost. That's the picture you just had up, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Female inmates were part of the landscape at Eastern State for almost 100 years, and Frida Frost was the last of them, transferred to the Muncie, Muncie Industrial Home for Women in 1923. Frost's departure marked the end of an era. Frost had been serving a 20-year sentence for murder where she had poisoned her husband. Oh, well, that sounds like a very logical thing that most women do to their husbands, like is poisoning them. You don't think your wife has ever tried to poison you? Oh, I'm you don't sure think she... she's ever put like a little drop of something in. Oh, I'm sure she's poisoning me right now. Like I'll be dead like next week, and then mm. you know that's why. That's why I'm glad mine can't read big words. She'll so... never know what to put in there. <laughs> so there we go. Feast upon that. That is Frida Frost. That yeah. that right there. That's a woman. Like that. Like that. That that's one of those. You're not going to fuck her. She's going to fuck you type women. No, it's like, why did you kill your husband? He done did me wrong. <laughs> Actually, she looks a little bit like Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> so it, it, could you imagine that you go to be your cellmate and like, it's like, this is uh, your cellmate, Frida. She just puts her face in the pie. Woo woo! It's a drive by fruiting. <laughs> I think I'll take my chances with the do- with the raping dog over there. <laughs> oh, now he's a rapist. Now you, <laughs> Damn, you made dude. this dog a rapist. <laughs> Don't put that shit on him. <laughs> <laughs> he did his time. He just killed one of them jazz cats from back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the first escape, an inmate who served as the warden's waiter lowers himself from the roof of the front of the building. Once captured, this inmate will escape this in the same manner in 1837. So he did it in 1832. And then five years later, it, I, I kind of feel like it's one of those things like, you know, how you hit like a chandelier and you ride up like the rope or whatever. Like, yeah. I feel like he did like the opposite. Like he just drops down on a rope and they're just kind of like, all right, Fred, come on, let's go on back in. <laughs> and then five years later on the anniversary, he does it again. And they're like, Fred, come at on. That, at that point, it was just entertainment for the other inmates. They were like, yeah. we're going to reenact Fred's escape. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, there, a lot of people escaped this place. Well, at least tried to escape it. There was yes. a guy named the Victor Babe Androli was convicted of killing a Pennsylvania state trooper in 1937. Uh, was given a life sentence for first degree murder. He escaped in 1943, 1943 by hiding in a delivery truck that was leaving the prison. He was That's caught several weeks later. Well, a delivery truck, what was the truck delivering though? Like, I feel like, you know, it, it's one of those things where you fuck up and mm. you're like, oh, you hop in the first truck you see, but it's taking like all the inmates underwear to yeah. be clean somewhere. And you're just kind of <laughs> like, what is that smell as like, yeah. oh, this is a, this is a dildo recycling plant. <laughs> <laughs> you just shuffle through the pile and there's free to frost right there. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and Eastern State Penitentiary, when it was built, it was uh, one of the most expensive buildings of its day in the United States. That's fucking crazy. Okay, so this rabbi guy, Morris the Rabbi Bolbeer, uh, he, when Morris uh, the Rabbi entered the penitentiary in 1942, he was serving a life sentence as a member of an arsenic murder ring located <laughs> in Philadelphia called a veteran witch doctor and compounder of charms. Bolbeer was one of the leaders of the group. They appealed to women who were willing to murder their husbands uh, in order to collect their husbands' insurance policies. Between 1932 and 1937, the group was responsible for the deaths of at least 30 people. 16 men and women were convicted for participating in the syndicate. Uh, Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Uh, Could you imagine that? Like him, Frida, and the dog all get together. Like that's that's like the thing. What if he gets there and he's like, Frida? And she's like, Rabbi? (laughs) She's just smoking and she's like, I'm out of the game, Rabbi. I'm out of the game. (laughs) It's been a long, long year, Rabbi. (laughs) And then it's all Fast and the Furious and they're like, just one more job. (laughs) (laughs) After this this husband, I'm going clean. (laughs) (laughs) This one's for family. Oh, there is one guy. One guy who escaped and made it out. Leo Callahan, 
of the approximately 100 inmates to escape from the eastern state, Leo Callahan is the only one that got away with it. Assault and battery with intent to kill brought Callahan to the penitentiary and a makeshift wooden ladder brought him out of it. <laughs> How do you fucking, what are you working on? Nothing. Just, uh, Just you know, ladders. imitation ladder. It's a bookshelf. <laughs> It's like a ladder made out of brooms, made out of like broomsticks. It's like brooms with the fucking bristles actually still on it. And it's just yeah, a, it's a, all it, brooms. It's just, just a broom. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Le- Leo, what are you doing? I'm painting this wall. It's a broom. I got to scrub this wall. <laughs> I've invented the octa broom. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, him and five of his buddies built a ladder that they used to scale the east wall of the penitentiary. His five accomplices were all eventually recaptured, but Callahan is still at large today. He would only be 110 years old. It's not, it's not out of the realm of possibility. No, he could still be alive. Right, you got to get him on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what if his story is like way fucking lamer than everybody thinks it is and he was just like the dumb friend that his friends built the ladder and he's the one that fucking made it you yeah, know? Yeah. Like, damn i'm he glad fo- carl built he that forced ladder. gumped his way to freedom for 110 years <laughs> well just imagine a guy who like rappelled down in front of the building like how he feels like he he does like all dramatic fashion like just goes down in front of the building like right <laughs> in fucking fucking in front of everybody and he's just like all right guys i'm leaving and then this guy just uses fucking a ladder made out of fucking like twigs yeah he's in his cell and he sees five guys just climbing a ladder and he's like a ladder fuck (laughs) the guy in the back of the underwear truck is just looking like what the hell is leo doing over there hey is that is that a ladder made out of brooms Uh, (laughs) the the dog's just steadily digging yeah yeah, the dog's See, I'm making no. dunk a tunnel 100 feet underground. Mm. And during all this, Al Capone's just kind of like, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna yeah, sit. Here. I'm just gonna die of syphilis. Now, now here's the thing: like, if they try to escape, like, you know, you try to escape there. Like, yeah. is your punishment at that point going to Alcatraz because you can't escape from there? Well, apparently, there there were a couple of claims that guys successfully made it out of Alcatraz, but at that point, it's just kind of like, okay, well, you tried to escape here. All right, off you go. Off the uh alcatraz you go and they were they were pretty confident fred couldn't make it so they just let him back in they're like he's yeah. just gonna he's gonna do the sheet down the window trick again yeah they're like what why do you have that date circled on your calendar fred he's like ah uh, nothing it's the anniversary <laughs> it just says dry cleaning in quotes <laughs> fred, fred they just sit there they're like fred what's up he just he's angry and there's just like hand-drawn images of ladders on his wall and he just <laughs> stares at that image angrily every single night Damn I, just, I don't Leo understand ladder. this witchcraft <laughs> a ladder. how does it work yeah. what kind of sorcery did he use to get out of here <laughs> when did you when did he i want to see if their time there overlapped when did uh let's see bank robber where okay there's a guy dug a hunter foot tunnel was recaptured minutes later god that would suck <laughs> you fucking did 100 feet then. underground and then you pop up and you're just just, you're in the guards break room like you pop pop up in the middle of fred's escape and he's like fucking fred i would have made it (laughs) oh this guy one guy he died 1980 that's not that that i also i forgot that steve buscemi narrates the tour like you get like a headset Mm -hmm. and it's steve buscemi on like the other side narrating it and it's like oh that's pretty fucking cool when you listen to it you know through and like uh, the night tours i like we d- we did it during the day tour but i heard the night tours are really really creepy like you hear and see a lot of weird shit on the night tours and they also uh they bring back like former guards and uh inmates and all that like for like a reunion every year so that's got to be cool like being able to go and hear them you know talk about it you know especially if it's like the kind of thing like they bring back the shamble corpse of leo and they're like leo tell us <laughs> How'd you do it, man? How did you do it? They just have their hand up his back like he's a fucking puppet. And he just yeah, he's like, ladder. <laughs> and the guards are just walking around like, hey, Jimmy, remember we beat the shit out of that guy in the stairwell? <laughs> it's just racist ghosts in here. <laughs> you, do the, you do the ghost hunt and you 
you're like a, a disembodied dog just <laughs> on the other side. And it's like, oh my God, we we have an EVP of Pep. You don't even understand. Like this was the most badass dog. As a, like, I mean, that's the thing. Like when they transported Pep, Pep around, they put like like ankle and like wrist like cuffs on him like like it was like it was like hannibal lecter dude it was like (laughs) they put him on a hand truck (laughs) yeah it's like the chains on all four legs and all that shit just change change to change as he's fucking walking (laughs) it It was probably some stupid dog too like a jack russell terrier or something like that it was it was a lab it was a lab was it It what color what color lab (laughs) Uh, yeah. I know what time of time, time in the world it was. <laughs> was it a yeah? Only a chocolate lab would get sentenced to prison for killing a cat. Actually, it was a black lab. Oh. <laughs> mm. uh, but no, they they sh- yeah. We have a photo of him uh, that pops up during the video footage that'll be playing shortly um, from when we actually toured Eastern State. And I mean, it, I mean, it, it was it was. A cool experience make sure if you're ever in philadelphia also when you go out of course pat's Geno's, you know um all those places go out and get a philadelphia cheesesteak like you know mm-hmm. we made a whole day out of it tony luke's tony luke's personally i'm very biased that's my favorite we used to go there before every wrestling show at the ecw arena and eat tony luke so you have all these wrestlers loaded up with cheesesteak getting ready to go out <laughs> and, and wrestle so you know but yeah i mean make a day out of it you know make something good out of it for Halloween, you know, Hey, dress up like pet, you know, go there dressed up yeah. like a, like a black lab, take your black yeah, lab. Like, uh, I, this isn't blackface. It's black lab face. I am a, <laughs> I'll I'm just a, take I'm a dog. It's not offensive. I'll just take my yellow lab and I'll doctor him up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, if you want to go and just do the generic tour tickets are $17 for adults, $13 for children. So, you know, pr- pretty, please, pretty. Please tell me pets are free. <laughs> it doesn't say anything on here about pets, which I feel like, you know, since Pep was, you know, on there, and, and I'm, I'm going to find out a little bit when we, when we play the video footage. I'm probably butchering the poor dog's name. It's probably like How or something like that. I'm calling him fucking Pep, and you know, <laughs> but I, I, I mean, you know, especially to be in prison around that time and all that like i just heard like people just weren't taken care of like now in prison it's like you know oh yeah now they have rights yeah yeah before now, they now, just shoved you in a hole yeah before they they would just shove you in a hole and they'd be like all right well you're not going to eat for the next nine days and like when they were in solitary confinement i didn't even think they had a toilet i think it was just kind of thing of oh sit over there and shit on that wall and piss on that wall and, you just yeah. think you they- I don't think that's true. They did. They had. They don't just let you shit. Not. They gave you a bucket or something, right? <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, like they give you a bucket, and they're like, "Well, you're you're really hungry, huh?" Well, let's see. Did inmates <laughs> have toilets at <laughs> Eastern State <laughs> Penitentiary? Okay, it's a very commonly asked question, apparently, because Google. Let's see. Yeah, Al Capone. Well, Al Capone had flush toilets, but I mean, he also had like Oriental rugs, which though you can't say those anymore. <laughs> uh, let's see, solitary. Okay, let's see. What do you think, Tom? What are you thinking? You think they got toilets and stuff? I think they had a hole in the ground. I don't think it was quite as barbaric as a bucket, but there was definitely no burning water. <laughs> Public humiliation, fiscal punishment, largest prison. Uh, prisoners were kept isolated, not allowed to speak or even look at each other. They wore hoods when traveling in and out of their cells. Um, let's see, prisoners a crumbling atmosphere, including Al Capone's cell. Um, there was a synagogue in there. The rabbi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the rabbi had a synagogue. <laughs> I don't see. Maybe, maybe they didn't just let them shit on themselves. They, they're, yeah. They, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, they just let them shit, and they're just kind of like, all right, well, here's the thing. You're going to now clean this up. You know, you're going to clean up your own. You know. Wait, oh, wait, hold on. The largest prison in the world when it opened, Eastern State, was truly cutting edge. Each cell, designed to look like a chapel, had its own flush toilet. 
Oh. Uh, Andrew Jackson's White House still had a chamber pot. So they had flushing toilets before the president did. <laughs> And one thing I, for some reason, won't let me save the photo, but I'll share, I'll share it like the way it is on the website. What the, like, do you see the shit like right there? That's like when their head. Yeah. Yeah. That's what to hold Those them people. still for the picture. Yeah, Those but people I mean, are dead. Have, to have their head held still. Like I saw that for a second. I was like, what the hell even is that? Like, you know, like, I feel like if they don't hold their head a certain way, like that thing, just fucking just, just right in your skull dead. <laughs> Like, I don't think that's true. <laughs> this is our method of murder. <laughs> and how did they, how did they do with Pep? Did Pep have to have that thing against his like little dog neck? Like I would, yeah, find his pet, my find his mugshot. It's got there's got to have a mugshot. Let's see, Eastern <laughs> State. Oh, here it is, Pep dog mug mugshot. There we go. Here we go. Let's see that mugshot. Oh, uh, here it is. Right here. This is exactly what we had in uh here. So I'll pull this up, and then uh Let's see. oh. Well, we all see it. We're like, oh, yeah. oh, it went to some dog site. That's not what I fucking want. <laughs> oh, man. I hope you're going down a furry rabbit hole. <laughs> all right, pep the dog. So that is saved. And I will go ahead and pull it up here. Eastern and then State I will penitentiary share. dog. Oh, yeah, that's him right here. That's Who's him. a bad boy? Yeah. Who's like, a like, bad boy? I, I mean, it, he, he kind of has like that weird like cane eye, like from WWE, like one eye's brighter than the other eye. Like, I think it's shadow, it's like, but it that it does have a fuck you look on his face. <laughs> yeah. Well, he just he just got arrested. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. He's like, I'm a dog. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, Yeah, that's right. I killed that even, cat. I'll kill even that cat he, again. <laughs> even he knew the whole thing was stupid. Yeah. He was like, How do you bleed? <laughs> like he said guilty. <laughs> Clearly he's guilty, Your Honor. <laughs> well and, i mean that's the thing like do you have a court case for him at that point like do you sit there and like pep's just sitting there in the courtroom or whatever and then he has to, like swear like he puts his paw on like the book or do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you god and what fucking like, shit jury was like oh convicted <laughs> Not a, a, they convinced 12 people that this was the no. most <laughs> evilest dog it was 12 cats dude oh yeah it yeah. was, oh, it was a cat jury <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck oh my, oh, oh my god i found a picture of it says inside america's most haunted prison uh but there's a, a picture of a mummified cat from one of these prisons oh <laughs> well here you go this is your new cellmate mummified cat <laughs> uh. <laughs> what pep not a cat murdering prison inmate it's a fake history what I, I'm on fake history hunter. Pep, not a cat murdering prison inmate. The picture's been shared online countless times with the claim of being a mugshot of Pep, the dog who was sentenced to life in prison for killing Pennsylvania governor's cat. Oh, we did. Oh, it was a it was a governor's <laughs> yeah, cat. It was the governor. It said it was shared online with the claim, but they told me this, and we have it recorded from Eastern State Penitentiary. Dang. It's hanging on the wall. That they got your money. They got your money, yo. <laughs> Even they fooled Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> well, God damn it. So it said, okay, well, it says that it is not. This story was debunked all the way back in the 1920s, but keeps being shared online to this day. The photo is real, and the dog is Pep, who did indeed go to jail in 1924. However, although he was registering the books as an actual murderer, he was innocent. <laughs> On August the 31st, 1924, <laughs> Pep was taken to the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania, but not because he killed a cat or anyone else. Pep never had a proper trial, was not officially <laughs> arrested, was never read his Miranda rights, did not get representation, and <laughs> was never convicted by any judge. So technically, he was innocent, regardless of whether or not he may have done the deed. Man, but he sounds... It but he like wasn't Kim Kardashian wrote this. He wasn't sent there as a prisoner to begin with. Pennsylvania Governor uh, Guilford Pinchot and his wife were responsible for Pep being sent to prison, not for any crime he may have committed, but to improve morale. One could say he was an early sort of therapy dog. Upon arrival, the guards made him pose for a mugshot and listed him as a convicted murderer. <laughs> the dog was like, hey, what are you writing there? 
<laughs> oh, that you're a murderer. I'm a what? <laughs> uh, they did. They didn't. They even gave him the alias of a dog, probably just as a joke or maybe as a way to get daily food ration for him. Although I doubt it, I couldn't help but think of all the military animal mascots who get official paperwork and ranks as part of their tradition, but end up being property registered uh, until they get food and cigarettes. And then they show his his intake record. That's awesome. The well, joke got it. Apparently the joke got a bit out of hand when the media got wind of poor Pep's plight. Uh, they loved the story and went with it. Pup was, Pep was even invited to be on, uh, to be broadcast on the radio. This newspaper clipping again mentions the crime, but it seems that Pep didn't know the right words to defend himself. <laughs> I like the idea of Pep though, giving you a shakedown as soon as you come in. I like that version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. I wish Pep was a murderer. Uh, I, li- I like the idea of Pep's radio interview. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so we're, we're uh, being joined here tonight by Pep. He's a convicted felon over at uh, Eastern State Penitentiary. How are you doing tonight, Pep? And it just, it just says, the N word. You're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? What is this? <laughs> but the idea, okay, so more and more people heard about Pep's story and believed it to be true. The idea of Pep really being put in jail, cat murder or not, caused a bit of a stir. Animal lovers were getting uh, rather angry with the governor, and he started receiving a lot of angry letters and telegrams from all over the world. It's like so today oh, it will be tweets. He will be getting a lot of bad tweets, a lot of angry tweets, wanting to cancel the governor over Pep the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Pep died in prison. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. He never got to see his freedom. <laughs> the initial letter to the warden, uh, Mr. Pinshaw, the governor, describes Pep as a Scotch retriever. But in the media, he's called a black retriever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not right. <laughs> Some things never change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, guys, I appreciate you guys uh, coming on and uh, bullshitting a little bit beforehand. I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Tommy Simbazo and uh, Tom Nutty get out of here. Of course, we're going to be live again this Friday on Facebook Live. Myself, Tom, and uh, Matt will be here. Of course, our guest is Isabella Karnstein. She's the owner and operator of Kitty Cat Manor. So that should be fun dealing what with it, that. What's her last name? Karnstein. Okay. Uh, yeah. And what is Kitty <laughs> Cat Manor? Time. Kitty Cat Manor, I, you know, I, I, it's a whole manner of where everybody's dressed up like cats. So I, it's kind of borderline furry, but they're not dressed up like furries. So I'm kind of intrigued on whether or not they drink out of saucers or what. And I mean, it's just. It's where just is all this the, located? I think it's in, I think it's in i think it was in vegas but they moved it oh, okay okay so okay. it's somewhere else now so it, it seems like a vegas thing i did yeah. try to eat it egg slut <laughs> egg slut <laughs> egg slut <laughs> all right so guys what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys get out of here and uh for everybody watching here on facebook live or right here on youtube we're gonna go ahead and get right into the um the vintage footage so uh just bear with me real quick and i'll get it pulled up right here in one second for you guys and of course it is myself and my old co-host alex lunar it was from 2012 one of the episodes in season two of happy hour tv when we visited eastern state penitentiary Ladies and gentlemen, this is Luna here from Happy Hour TV, the original Bray Tar here, and we are joined by Fran. We are over here at Eastern State Penitentiary. This isn't exactly in Baltimore, but it's really not that far of a trip. Maybe an hour and a half up the road in Philly. This is Eastern State Penitentiary, and Fran here is going to give us a little background. Well, Eastern State Penitentiary uh, was built in 1829 and stayed in operation until 1971. It's considered to be the world's first penitentiary. A um, very influential prison design called the Radio Plan um, originated here. We've had a lot of famous inmates, such as Al Capone, who spent some time right in the cell behind us. Slippery Sutton, a very famous bank robber, depression era guy, who escaped from prison a bunch of times. He was here, and now we are a historic site. We're open every day from 10 to 5. We have a whole bunch of events throughout the year, and we have a big haunted house in the fall called Terror Behind the Walls. 
Now, as we know, over the years, you guys have been featured mainly on Ghost Hunters. We've seen you on the Travel Channel for the Halloween stuff. Is there anything else you guys do besides the tours and uh, haunted attraction? And all yeah, I mean, part of our mission statement as an organization is to really use the space in a lot of different ways. Um, we try to have site-specific stuff that touches on Eastern States history and also kind of current correctional issues as well. So we have a full series of programming um, coming up. We have a big event for Bastille Day, which kind of plays on the idea of being in prison and also the castle. Bastille Day is like the French Fourth of July. We are having a Fourth of July event here, a field day, uh, where we're going to recreate some of the games that the inmates played, three-legged races, a potato sack race, welcome for the public to come out and play on the baseball field. Um, we have an alumni reunion every year where former inmates and guards come back and talk to the public, answer questions, we have a little barbecue for them. Um, we have different beh behind the scenes stores, one's coming up about death row, we have another one coming up in the, um, in the fall about the hospital, so areas that people can't normally see. We have a lot of interest um, from photographers and films, a lot of movies have been filmed here. We had Transformers 2 a couple years ago, 12 Monkeys back in the day, so a lot of stuff happens here. Some of the stuff that might not be as much for the community, but I, I bet definitely brings in some people, has got to be all the haunted stuff. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of interest in that. Um, for whatever reason, people are definitely drawn to the dark and the macabre, and this is a place that just kind of loses that type of stuff. So like you mentioned, uh, Ghost Hunters, um, Most Haunted, and all these paranormal shows. I've been to recent state and talk a lot about um, the experience that people have here. I can tell you I've never I've definitely had an experience that I could say one of those ago, so probably because it's easier for me. I work here every day. There's a lot of stories and definitely a creepy place. I've spent the night here. I've been here a lot by myself in the dark and you know there's always a noise right around the next corner or something. People do tell stories about you know, a ghost that is up in the central guard tower. When they check that out, if they're interested in seeing that. Um, just, you know, figures that kind of roam the hallways and disappear. So there's a lot of those stories um, that are out there, certainly. Now, personally, what's your favorite part of the prison? Um, that's a good question. I mean, it's a big place. It's about 11 acres, and it was kind of built in, in stages as well. I guess if I had to pick a favorite cell block, it would be cell block 14, which is actually one of the youngest cell blocks. It was built in 1927. It was built by inmates. It's kind of uh, poured concrete, so it doesn't look kind of as grand and old as a lot of the stuff you see around here. But there's something about that block that I really like. It's three stories high, and it kind of has a strange curved architecture, tiny cells, and it's just a passage in it that leads to the hospital. That is pretty cool. There are stories, ghost stories, about Al Capone. They say that he was haunted by some of the people he may have been killed here. Um, some of the people he may have killed, they talk about him being haunted here, kind of talking to figures that weren't there. Um, so there's some stories about that. Some people do think that was a simple story to rock his brain, perhaps try to tomorrow. And how many guards were they having on staff here at that uh, point? Not nearly enough. Uh, when they had that big riot in 1961, there was about 900 inmates in the building, and the night shift of guards was 18. 18? I know. 1,800. I wonder, I wonder how they have a riot. I know. Bad planning on their part. Now, our, our buddy Ryan, he had a, uh, a good question. Is there any type of hazing or tricks that's played on any of your uh, employees when they're new to the place? Oh, we would never do such a thing. <laughs> Um, so they, they, they never ever tell somebody he has to go in there to clean the room and then lock him in or anything? Uh, we've said, definitely done things like that. <laughs> uh, you know, we try to be nice to our employees, but definitely yeah, there's... Staff psychiatrist oh. on hand for the aftermath of that. I mean, we I, I definitely over the years had people who won't work after dark. Um, this, the most famous uh, escape did occur in the cell block. Willie Sutton, that guy, the bank robber, right. left and other guys dug their way out of the cell block. They went 15 feet underground, 97 feet out, and then 15 feet back up. Um, and so the tunnel followed the path of this white line. I'm um, going exit the building. You can go into the cell. And we've done a little art. Uh, like... Okay, now this right here is something that I thought he was joking around with us about. But apparently here is the dog that lived here in the prison named Pep. Did he shower with the rest This of is oh, yeah. <laughs> his mug shot. And as you can read right here, apparently he was a cat murdering dog. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That was our February edition for Fully Fermented. Make sure you catch us again for Fully Fermented Live next month on March 1st. We will be coming to you right here on Facebook Live. Don't quite know yet what vintage footage we're going to use. And also, we're starting to wear a little thin on some of our vintage footage. So I think what we're going to do is with Fully Fermented Live, I think this is going to end up becoming a show kind of like what you just saw where we go to places, we shoot some video, 
bullshit a little bit before it and then show the footage to feature those places, local businesses, etc. So that's what I want to try to evolve fully fermented into. Also make sure not only this Friday, tune in, tune in this Saturday as well, as we will be live for a reschedule for the Happy Hour Podcast Roundtable, which is a wrestling roundtable, which features myself, aka Chase Rawlings. Psychrates will be joining me along with Chad Austin, who was known from Smoky Mountain Wrestling and ECW, Ruckus, who is known all over the world for his independent stuff, Wrestle Society X, Ring of Honor, Combat Zone Wrestling, you name it, he's been there. And of course, Bobby Starr, who's known right here in Maryland, and he also performed for WCW and WWF. Once again, thank you for tuning in to our fully fermented monthly episode exclusively right here on Facebook Live and YouTube. Of course, I'm Ray, and we will see you guys next time. Peace. See you later, guys. Whoever decides it wants to stop.